Hello, my name is Mr. Barr from Dunlap Elementary here in Seattle Public Schools. Welcome to our second lesson of the week on narrative fiction. Now, this week we are, um, sorry, there's um, just a, an issue with one of my students here. Just, just give, me, give me one second. Oh, yes, Abraham. Abraham, what's wrong? Is there something we need to talk about before class today? Oh, you're upset because you had to take a bath this morning? Well, you know it was time for a bath, and come on, your mom said it really, really was important. And I think it's a message for all of us that even if we don't agree with our moms or dads or family members at home, during these times, we got to make sure we listen to them because they really know what's best for us. And also, just because you get into a little fight with someone at home about chores or something like that, it doesn't mean you can't come to class and it doesn't mean you need to stop learning. You got to keep on reading and keep on doing your work. All right, now let's go take our seat. Yep, right to your seat. We got class. It's not your seat. It's not your seat. Your seat's right here. The book we're reading this week is called Not My Girl. It's by Christy Jordan Fenton and Margaret Pokiak Fenton, and it's illustrated by Gabrielle Rimmerd. The book is about a girl named Ulaman, or Margaret, and she's been away at a school where they've tried to get rid of all of her native culture. Her mom, when she returns, even says that she's not her daughter anymore. Margaret can't even eat the food that her family cooks. She has trouble with the chores that her mom tells her to do. And her friends won't talk to her. We're going to continue to look at our elements of fiction. Characters, the people in the story. Setting, where and when the story takes place. Plot, what happens to the characters in the story. And conflict, the problem the characters need to solve. Today, though, we're going to take a deep dive into characters by examining character change. In some works of fiction, the change a character goes through can be the most important part of the whole story. This change and what caused it to happen can help us see people in a different way or can convey a meaningful message from the author. When we examine character change, we need to look at three different things. First, what is the character, in this case, Margaret or Ulaman, like at the beginning of the story? Then, what is she like at the end of the story? And what events cause that change? Let's answer the first part. What is Margaret like at the beginning of our story? Well, we could say she's not accepted by her family. And we know that based on evidence from the text on page two where her mom is saying, not my girl. We could also say that she's sad and depressed. And our evidence for that is her crying. We could say she's alone. And our evidence is her saying that she doesn't feel like she's part of the flock, meaning her family. We could also say that she feels useless and unable to help. And we know that because on page 10, she talks about losing the skills she needed. Let's see what happens today. Dizzy with hunger and disappointment, I stumbled home. A dog leapt up as I approached. Wanting to know if I would always be an outsider, I offered a hand. The dog answered with a snarl and a flash of sharp teeth that nearly took off my fingers. I retreated to a corner of the tent and hid in my favorite book until my family returned. My sisters had caught many fish and I was jealous. Then my mother placed her ulu in my hands. 
She guided the knife up the fish's belly, patiently showing me how to gut it. That night, as I reached for a piece of fish, I thought for a moment how embarrassed I would be if the nuns could see me eating with my hands. But I was proud that I had helped to prepare the fish, and it had been a long while since we had a meal I could eat. So I gorged myself. And gorged means you eat a lot. Turn to your partner. And remember, your partner can be a friend or family member that's right next to you. It can be a pet or a stuffed animal. It can always be a person that you're calling on your imaginary phone. But turn to your partner and tell them what has happened in the story so far today. You might have said that Margaret tries to touch a dog, but then it snaps at her and reminds her that she still doesn't feel accepted. You also might have said that her mother helps her gut a fish, and that makes her happy, and she eats a lot of it. When the air turned crisp again, one of the dogs had a litter of pups. Agnes would love them. I had relearned many of the words of my people, so I decided to try to see her again. I carefully snatched a soft pup, belted it into the back of my parka like a baby, and set off. My hand trembled, and trembled just means it shook. My hand trembled as it struck her door. No one answered. After a long wait, I gave up. I walked down to the beach took out my puppy and played with it, and sang it songs I remembered from school. Arriving home late for supper, I quickly stripped off my parka, forgetting the puppy. My father leapt and caught it just before it hit the floor. Ulaman, my mother shouted. As I looked at the nearly lifeless body, I felt a searing of cold remorse. And remorse means regret when you really feel bad about something you did. How long have you had this puppy? My father asked. I shrugged. Since morning. My father knelt down. Ulaman, puppies need their mother's milk. Will it die? I asked. I'm not sure, he said sadly. It was all too much. I turned and ran out into the night where the iridescent fronds, and iridescent means very colorful and shiny, and fronds are leaves or things that are leaf-like, where the iridescent fronds of the northern lights danced down from the sky. Grandmother once told me that if I whistled to them, their tendrils, and tendrils are parts of plants that look like threads, sometimes spin around the stem. Their tendrils would reach down and snatch me away. I whistled until my lips hurt, but they ignored me. Instead of scolding me, and scolding means to yell at someone. Instead of scolding me when I returned, my father called me to the fire and handed me an eyedropper. I took it, sucked up some rice water, and released it into the puppy's mouth. I had nursed patients at the hospital next to the school and knew how to care for the sick. I stayed up all night feeding my little patient. In the morning, we took the puppy outside. At first, his mother pushed him away. He whimpered. Like me, he no longer carried his family's scent. I closed my eyes and wished with all my heart I'd never taken him. When I looked again, his mother was licking him. My father squeezed me to him and smiled. By the time the snows came, eating was getting easier. And while I was still happy to share my muck tuck with the puppy, I kept my pipsy for myself. I had regained my family's scent 
and often help my father with the dogs. Turn to your partner. Tell them what has happened in the story so far today. You might have said that Margaret takes a newborn puppy and starts to play with it without realizing that she's really going to hurt it by separating it from her mother. Margaret feels terrible, but she works really hard and nurses the puppy back to health. One day, he asked me to join him on a hunting trip. I was ecstatic. And ecstatic just means very happy. I was ecstatic. I love traveling by dog sled. We were far out on the barren tundra. And tundra is land that's very cold where there's no trees and the ground is frozen. We were far out on the barren tundra when my father asked, Ulaman, do you know the dog commands? Yes, I said confidently. G means go right and left is haw. He laughed, hopping off and leaving me in command. The dogs were moving fast and my heart was racing. Haw, I called excitedly, meaning to avoid the pond on the left. But I had confused my commands. The dogs went toward the pond. Gee, gee, I shouted. The dogs bolted sharply right. Haw, haw, I countered. They darted so quickly left, I nearly fell off the sled. Panicked, I repeated, Ha! Ha! My command tamed the line into a tight coil that slowed to a gradual stop. Atta girl, Ulaman! My father shouted. As we rode back to town, I felt proud standing ahead of him on the runners. I was sure he was proud too. He let me drive often after that. On Christmas morning, I awoke to the smell of panic. My father sat like Santa with a load of presents. He gave my brother a train and my sisters beautiful porcelain dolls. There was nothing for me. I cried. I had tried so hard, but I still did not belong. What's wrong? My father asked. I wanted a doll. I sobbed. I thought you were too old for dolls, he teased. Maybe you are not big enough for your own dog sled. My own dog sled? I ran outside to find six dogs hitched to a new sled. I hopped on and drove around and around town beneath the dancing northern lights. I passed by Agnes and her mother. At that speed, I could not see their expressions, but they both waved and cheered. As I neared home, I saw that my father had his own team of dogs hitched and my brother and sisters loaded on his sled. I slowed, allowing my mother to climb on the runners behind me, my eyelashes freezing with tears. As we all sped off like a swift winged flock, the sound of my mother's voice filled my ears. My girl, she shouted proudly, and the birds rose up in my heart to soar high once again. <sighs> Sorry, the allergies are just killing me today. Turn to your partner and tell them what happened in this story at the end. You might have said that Margaret starts riding the sled dogs with her dad, and this makes her really happy and proud. On Christmas, she doesn't think she's getting any gift, but her dad surprises her with her very own sled. At the end of the book, Margaret's really happy because her family has accepted her again, and her mom has exclaimed that she is her daughter. 
Let's go back to our chart about character change. We already described Margaret at the beginning of the story, but what's she like now at the end of the story? Well, first, you could say she's accepted by her family. And there's evidence from the text on page 34 where her mom calls her my girl proudly. You could also say that now she's confident. And we can find evidence of this on page 27 when she takes command of the dog sled. She's also happy now at the end of the story. At the very end, she describes how the birds in her heart are soaring. And lastly, we could say that she's part of her community again. The text gives us evidence of this when she drives past her friend and her mom and they wave and cheer on page 32. The last thing we need to do is figure out what events caused this change in Margaret. What events didn't cause that change? Well, the first one seemed to be when she nursed the puppy back to health. Right after that happens, the text says, my father squeezed me to him and smiled. The text also says, I had regained my family's scent and often help my father with the dogs. The other event seems to be when Margaret starts riding the sled dogs with her dad. After that happens, the text says that Margaret felt proud of herself, and it also says that her father was proud of her too. By understanding this character change, we really have a better idea of what the story is all about. When you think about it, the whole story revolves around Margaret and how she starts out as a sad child that's not accepted by her family, and how she transforms into a confident, happy kid that's part of her family and her community again. Now it's time for your independent daily reading. Remember, find a quiet place in your house, a book you really want to read, make sure it is a fiction book. And while you read, I want you to be thinking about all the story elements we've talked about, especially character change. Think about what the characters in your book are, and then think about how certain conflicts or events or realizations might change the way they are. The book I'll be reading is called The Red Pencil by Andrea Davis Pinckney. This book's about a girl named Amira who lives in a village in Sudan that gets attacked. She has to travel on foot across the country to make it to a refugee camp. And on her way, she finds a red pencil that is somehow going to help her. I cannot wait. Let's get reading. If you're running out of books at home, here's a way you can get some using the Seattle Public Schools website. You even smell good now. You do, like lavender. <laughs>